I'm going to guess that if you studied some form of engineering, the first thing you ever learned about a pump was a pump curve for a centrifugal pump. I'm also going to take a guess that you learned about pumps in parallel and pumps in series. Then I'm going to take a guess and say that you learned that if you change the speed of a pump, you learned that it, the volumetric flow rate changes, the head changes and the power changes in various fractions depending on how much you're changing the speed. In my opinion, if you want to understand how pumps work, that's not the right starting point because you start getting hit with curves and maths and equations and you build up zero intuition about what a pump is actually doing. I'm going to keep talking about pumps, but this is applicable to compressors too. How much weight can you hold in front of you? If upon hearing that question you started thinking about your gym routine, calm down, not that kind of video. Let's take a very modest weight in this one and a half liter bottle that contains water, which means it weighs one and a half kilograms. On earth, the amount of force required to stop this bottle from falling towards the ground is 50 newtons in an upward direction. Now instead, let's consider this A4 piece of paper. How much does an A4 piece of paper weigh? So we've established that this piece of paper weighs 5 grams, which means the force required to support it is 0.05 newtons upwards. Now imagine I'm standing, holding this piece of paper, exerting my 0.05 newtons, and you come past me and you say, what the hell's happening here? Why are you only giving me 0.05 newtons when yesterday you were exerting 15 newtons when you were holding the bottle of water? You get why that question doesn't make sense, right? It's not as if I can't give 15 newtons, it's just that this piece of paper doesn't require 15 newtons in order to support it. I think this should be the starting point for understanding how pumps and compressors work. Build an intuition about what the pump is trying to achieve. You see, when you hold something in front of you, you don't need to do anything special to exert the right amount of force. You know that if you want to stop this thing falling from the ground, you, your body will naturally exert this amount of force without you really needing to think about, oh, now I'm exerting too much, now I'm exerting too little. You just hold it. Just like your body's natural reaction is to exert the right amount of force onto an object when you're holding it, the flow and the pressure you get from any pump is a natural reaction to the load that is placed on that pump. Yes, different types of pumps have different curves. That's what describes how they react. But the important thing to realize is the way they react can only be determined when you understand the load that's placed on them. You see, now I've been given a strict instruction when I'm holding this object. I've been told, hold it in place and don't let it fall and don't lift it. Just keep it here. A pump's instruction is a little bit different. I'm going to keep under the assumption that we're running on an electric motor to keep this simple. But the instruction that the pump's been given is that it needs to operate at a very specific speed. It does not care what your flow and pressure are. All it cares about is making sure it doesn't piss off the motor that's running it, it better turn at the same speed as the motor. And that's because the motor doesn't have a say in what speed it turns at either. It's been told you need to turn at this many revolutions per minute in order to sync up with the electrical supply that's supplying you. And that's determined by the frequency. So no one has a choice here. The flow and the pressure are the last thing that this piece of equipment is worried about. So the flow and the pressure are the natural consequence of the pump turning at a given speed, just like the force I'm exerting on this bottle is the natural consequence of me being told, hold this thing still. Without knowing how much this object weighs, I do not know how I will react. And the point is that this is true regardless of the type of the pump. It doesn't matter whether I'm talking about a centrifugal, a lobe, a gear, a screw pump. All of these pumps will behave in this way. There's plenty of videos describing pump curves and system curves. You can go check those out. That's not what I'm doing here. The reason I want to use this as a starting point 
is that I've been in so many situations on operating plants where I've looked at a pressure with a colleague and someone has said, hmm, this process pressure is lower than it was yesterday. It looks like our pump is not giving enough pressure. If you're ever in a situation where you think something like that, or you have a colleague and you hear them say that, your first thought should be, bro, why are you only giving me 0.05 newtons? It doesn't matter how big or small the pump or compressor, it doesn't matter the characteristic curve of that pump or compressor, it doesn't matter the type of pump or compressor. If I remove the discharge piping from that piece of turbo machinery and I remove all load from it, I will get a hell of a lot of flow based on the characteristic, but I will get zero pressure. And it's not as if the pump or compressor could give me more pressure if only it tried harder. I've removed all load from it and therefore it has no other choice but to give zero pressure. There is one really important difference where this analogy falls apart in terms of supporting objects. You see, regardless whether it's me holding this one and a half kilograms, or whether it's a child or a bodybuilder, all of us will be required to exert 50 newtons to support it. If, however, I install a bigger pump or a bigger compressor on the same process, meaning the same load, I will get more head and flow. And to understand that, you need to start understanding pump curves and system curves. So understanding that a pump's reaction is a natural consequence to its load is for me the most important starting point. Understanding that idea for me is more important than knowing what a centrifugal pump characteristic curve looks like because the point is all pumps and all compressors exhibit that behavior. And not understanding that translates to something really nasty I think about a lot of process engineers, which is they love to say, hmm, there's something wrong with the pump. I guess I'm going to have to get my maintenance colleague to look at it. There's some mechanical problem with the pump, please take it apart. Then my maintenance colleague has to go, waste his time, dismantle the pump, check it, put it back together, install it and tell me, check the pump, nothing's wrong. Before you go and waste a maintenance colleague's time dismantling your pump, make sure you're not trying to lift 0.05 newtons, bro. 